back in the 80s, a long time ago, where uh, I was stationed in uh, Japan at Yokosuka Navy Base. And uh, I'd be really nervous around Japanese, you know. I mean, I'd be sitting in a restaurant, you know, I'd order my food, and all of a sudden I'd, I'd break out in a sweat. But uh, yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. And this is what it was, you know, um, being an American, you know, we're like really positive, you know, and um, really, really outgoing, but I, I, I knew, you know, after a couple of months in Japan that that didn't go very well with the Japanese. So, you know, I started to uh, control that uh, American uh, <laughs> behavior. And man, that's what was causing those panic attacks. Well, not panic attacks. Just stress from not being myself. But you know, I kept it up because I, I, I could clearly see how being a typical American wasn't a big hit <laughs> with them. <laughs> and now here I am. Uh, let's see the 80s, I don't know, several decades later and uh, you know I don't have those uh, panic attacks anymore. I understand this um, you know this uh, Uchi Soto concept right now really really well and um, I understand how you know the uh, typical American behavior doesn't fit with that Uchisoto concept. They're on opposite ends of the spectrum. As a matter of fact, the tables have been turned. Now, I'm able to take advantage of that Uchisoto concept and, um, you know, teach not teach, engage the students in deep learning. But you know, of course, if I didn't have any knowledge of the Uchi Soto concept, it'd be impossible to engage them in deep learning. Oh yeah, concerning, you know, engaging students in deep learning, you'd have to see my first video, you know, where I talked about the so-called Wagamama behavior of the Japanese. Later.